Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be wiring up the engine bay in the charger. In the last video I had to pretty much unravel seven wiring harnesses which is a very time consuming process to get everything unsheathed and then get all of the wiring that I need for the car out of each harness. So now that that is done and I have piles of wire ready to go on the car we can get the engine bay wired up and I want to get the 6.2 in the car but the issue is, is I need space to work and make this wiring harness. So I'm waiting on connector pins and hopefully by the end of the video I will have all of those so I can recrimp new pins on wires and shorten stuff instead of cutting it and soldering it, which will be a lot better in the end result than you know cutting it, soldering it, heat shrinking it. It'll just be a lot cleaner of an install because most of the wires coming out of the Durango harness are like 10 to 20 feet too long. So let's get to work, get all this stuff in the car. I cannot wait. I'm also waiting on some heat sheeting or some wire loom and hopefully it'll come before the end of the video so I can get everything wrapped and we can finally get the V8 in the car. I can't wait to see this engine. I've been saying this for a lot of videos and I don't think people understand how difficult it is to do stuff. I could just hack job it and do it really quick and just you know splice stuff together but at the end of the day when you do stuff like that it just ends up giving you gremlins later on so It's been quite a bit of work, but pretty much everything in the front is now wired up. Both headlights are wired up, the marker lights are wired up. We have the crash sensors, the wheel speed sensors, just everything except for the ABS pump. So I have the ground and the right hand wheel speed sensor ran, but I need to get all of this stuff right here over to the ABS pump, which isn't that big of a deal, but the more stuff that I add over to this side, the more stuff I have to pull out. So I want to start connecting grounds and get everything with that connected, but I might just run everything all as one and then pull the whole harness as you would if, you know, if I was installing like a factory harness that I ordered. So I'll just pull the whole thing and uh, then I'll just have to connect all the grounds, which is gonna be a lot of stuff to connect. So I just need to keep everything organized and tidy and clean. Also, as you can see, all these wires are nice and organized, ran through. I've been running them, you know, through single and we have 
the electric power steering CAN bus wire, and we have the power wire for the electric power steering, the, uh, you know, the, the sensor part of it. This is the main power. And then also I added the charger electric power steering ground wire. So everything mounts here perfectly. And the same thing goes for the ABS pump. So we're using the charger ABS pump ground as well as all of the charger ABS wiring. So it'll just save us a lot of headaches in the future, just in case, you know, I have some issues where there is a resistance issue that I can go in and I know that all the wiring is factory charger wiring. So I could change that, I believe in the ABS pump and the BCM for CAN bus, but everything should be, I believe it's 120 ohms, and that's why those resistor packs are in there. So um, one thing I did find out, so I was wiring up the driver's side headlight, everything worked perfectly, and then I got over to the passenger side headlight and it wouldn't light the light. So the HID module wasn't working. Dodge wired this light incorrectly from the factory. So. I fixed, I actually just flipped the wiring on the harness instead of inside the light, but now everything is uh, ready to go and we have pretty much everything there. One other thing I was going to do was I started to loom everything. You can't really see it. I started to loom everything in this nice loom, but then that loom isn't as nice as I thought it was gonna be. So I ordered it off of Amazon and it looked like it was gonna be good. But then I started, you know, heat shrinking everything and heating it up with the heat gun and that loom started to melt. So at that point I was like, well, I'm just gonna take all the stuff that I already did it apart. So that's why it's taken me so long to do this wiring harness because I had everything ran and then I had to rerun it because I had to unloom a bunch of stuff. So. What I'm gonna do is just get some of that split fabric loom like factory and just make it look 100% factory. And we'll just go from there. Maybe once I do the 426 and pull everything back out later on, then maybe I'll go and, you know, re-loom it and go from there. But this is quite a process. As you can see, we are getting a lot less wires over there. It doesn't look like it, but there's a lot less piles of wire right here. This is the stuff that's going into the car. And then also this pile over here is still needs to go into the car. So there's, there's a few things left, but, um, and this is all fuse box stuff and that's all interior body harness stuff. So as you can see, the fuse box plugs with my wiring harness are all going to be on the main engine bay wiring harness instead of being part of the whole inside of the car wiring harness, which is totally dumb. So I still have a few wires and I'll probably delete most of that stuff because I have to, you know, it's not gonna have the TVs, it's not gonna have, um, you know, two extra rows of heated seats.
table is now looking a whole lot cleaner. There isn't as much wiring on the table. There also was a bunch of piles of wire on the floor and they're all now in the charger, which I'm very happy about. We still have the transfer case control wiring and module that I need to add to the harness, but I'm waiting for pins so I can finish up the engine harness and add this into the engine harness. Also, we have the ELSD module and harness that I have to add and then all the power window stuff. So that will be added, but I could still put the engine in after, you know, I could do this after I put the engine in. So. I'm happy that everything is finally in the car because this has been kind of a lot of work. I mean, I'm pretty good at wiring and it just is very time consuming. It doesn't matter how good you are at it. It just takes the, you know, if you want it done right, you just have to be patient. And it's a lot of running wires, which I just ended up putting the stool in the center of the engine bay and just going around and around, which took a very long time. But as you can see, it is very nice how everything came out. The one thing I'm also waiting on is I ordered, I also ordered pins for the ABS pump. So the newer ABS pumps use smaller pins. So I couldn't use the original pins from the charger ABS pump. So once I get those pins, I'll crimp everything down with weather pack connectors. We'll plug everything in, she'll be ready to go. And then I have to run those last few wires to the fuse box, which isn't that big of a deal. So everything else, windshield wipers, all of the sensors over here, all the headlights, all the sensors up here, the supercharger cooling pump. I mean, everything is now ran. We have the ECU over in the corner. I also have everything hooked up to the body control module, everything with CAN bus. I need to pretty much start running all the interior stuff, but I'll do that after I put the engine and transmission in because I'll be able to roll this thing forward and I'll be able to open the doors all the way with it on the lift. It's kind of a pain. So I'll just be waiting to do all this stuff on the interior. Plus I made everything like factory. So it uses all the factory connectors, just like it would be at a charger. So I could just unplug stuff. Everything will go to the CAN bus through this plug. Everything will go to the BCM through this plug and to the, lo the lower wiring harness to go inside the car. It's gonna be very, very simple, very nice. It's just gonna be like factory. So if I need to troubleshoot anything, it's gonna be super, super easy, which will be, you know, there might be some issues, but I really doubt it. I just want it to be, you know, I wanna be able to troubleshoot it if I need to. So one thing about the headlights, this headlight was fine, but Dodge wired the ballast backwards on this one. So I started wiring everything up and started testing it and the low beam wouldn't come on and I was like, Oh, what's going on with my headlight? This is a brand new, I think they're like $1,500 headlights or $1,800, something like that. They're very expensive. And I was like, the ballast doesn't work. So then I started troubleshooting the headlight. It took me about, you know, three hours to figure that out. And then I finally got it. It was just wired backwards, fixed the wiring. And now we're 100% ready to go on the front. Another thing, I also did, uh, you know, we have the side marker lights and I also deleted all the active suspension stuff. So we don't have any of that in the harness. Um, you know, I deleted as much stuff as I could. I, I really didn't need stuff that I wasn't gonna use, but I'm very happy with the progress of this. And I know it has been taking a lot of time, but if I just hack jobbed everything, I could have got this thing done I could have got it done really quick, but the quality of this, I'd rather have really nice quality because I'm gonna keep this car for a very long time and I don't want this thing to start deteriorating and stuff like that. So people that watch my videos definitely know that I like to do things right because I keep all my cars and I don't really plan on getting rid of them to, you know, I don't build cars to get rid of, I build them to enjoy and drive. So I can't wait for the charger to finally be finished so I can finally pull her out under her own power. And it's getting very close. Once all this wiring stuff's done in the front, I can finally get the engine and tranny in there. And once I get the engine and tranny, we can get all the front suspension on. And I was planning on doing some stuff to the supercharger cooling system, but I may hold off on that. Just run it like it should be factory with the cooler over here without a power chiller and then I could go ahead later on and add all that stuff. And I'm just gonna run the, like a jumper harness from this side, because I'm gonna have the plug for the pump over 
there because I'm going to end up putting the pump over there because it's going to be a lot more room to put a dry sump tank where that pump and all that stuff would be. So I'm going to end the video here getting very close with this car. I mean, it still has a lot of stuff to do, but I should be able to get this thing running and driving. I'm going to say by the end of the year, I think I could, I think I'll probably be before that, but I just want to finally have this thing done. I've been killing myself doing this thing and uh, I don't think people realize how much I work on this thing. So I'm gonna end the video here. If you like these videos, make sure to click the subscribe button, thumbs up, throw a comment below. As always, see you guys next time. <laughs>